the big game for these two. Not forgetting that this is an upper bracket semi. You lock yourself in for the playoffs with a win here. Big names already from Group A locked in. Ooh. A's Navi, Complexity, Vitality. Look at the nades right now from Heroic here. They've invested quite heavily here on the pistol round, and we're seeing more and more of that in recent times. Three individuals with sets of utility. It's going to be Bar up Nico and Stown, all with smokes, a couple of mollies and flashes. Early presence towards B. Plopsky has to think better of picking this one because he is on a bit of an island, does have twist in rotation over that mid-window position. But they're setting up for a B execute. Okay, Plopsky's actually got a great timing. He's going to be dissuaded. He just spots one in the peripheral vision. And if they go for this boost silently, they are rotating. It seems Twist is on construction. Nork is in middle as well. So they're going to have a very quick response here, the CTs. And here's the pins being pulled. This is the go. Nork rotating in. Plopsky tucked in. He wants to hold quad, but they're not even going quad. It's Tessus charging in. Nico eventually finds him, and it's three quick frags, all in favor of Heroic. How do you get back in this? NIP completely locked out by the utility. Stown even has another smoke to drop at this stage. So Hamperson, Rez, you'll need a couple of miracle shots. Jostling for position here. It's just going to come down to the bomb now as they do find a frag as they want to still force the issue here. Damage and a couple of pistol kills could be the name of the game. They found a second. Time a problem. And yeah, this one's done and dusted. Heroic have picked up the pistol. The first pistol for Heroic in the three maps we've seen played. So they're kicking off Vertigo in style. Yeah, that makes a big difference. You said they had to get off to a start. Well... T pistol one. Look what that's done for Tess is immediately investing into an AK-47. And the fact that they didn't fight quad early, they decided they'd rather be dealing with that Jenny's player. And of course, Plopsky can't be in two places at once. Your, your third man in's flight path clears quad. It worked out one wonders. That's one of the things with Heroic that we've noted a couple of times be here, and we have covered it off with uh, the skyboxes, just the flight paths that they do run, and, and how much belief they have in their teammates to actually hit those opening kills. It is going to be the force from NIP, the only one not to fully... Oh, there's two who haven't fully invested. Rez and Nork haven't gone all in, and Hampus has left a little bit of residual cash as well. But look at Hampus' position. Rush is right to observe it. It's eventually going to potentially destabilize all of this ramp aggression. So the nade's good. It does find Bor up down to 59, and they smoke the sandbags late, hoping that that keeps attention drawn elsewhere. It hasn't. That's all. He could be good. Heroic, though. They're just walking in, taking the fights that are given to them. There's four of them standing and delivering. You can't win those duels with Deagles when there's so many bullets. Look how much damage has been done. There isn't a single member of Heroic that hasn't been beaten up to some extent, but their scars make them who they are. Five of them still alive and will be saving. Lots of rifles carried through as well, so that's one thing to know. They did not for majority SMGs. It was Glills and AKs to take those fights at range. It will just be Nico with a MAC-10, and he's the one who's walked away with the most health. Hampus here, seeing if he can hamper anybody. Le yeah, you like that one? Yeah. Really crowbar that no, one. No, no, I'll, I'll eat that with a spoon any day, bro. Nom, nom, nom. Just like the persimmon, Alex. Don't forget about the persimmon. Persimmon. Any other fruit you want to learn about? Lychees. Uh, you know, I don't know enough about the dragon fruit. The dragon fruit is also from uh, Asia. Okay. Uh, normally pink in color. Once you crack that bad boy open, white with How black seeds. How am I eating seeds. that? Am I snacking on a dragon fruit? Am I uh, cooking with a dragon fruit? You can snack on a dragon fruit. You do it in a knife. No. Get yourself That's a not a knife. This is a knife. This is a dragon fruit knife. Gosh, how do you feel about dragon fruits? I've had them before. They are kind of cool. They look really cool, though. They like, are aesthetically they, pleasing. Yeah, they, Ooh, they have a like... a full shot of Threat's face. <laughs> Told you we'd get there eventually. Nice. What about a durian, Rush? You ever had a durian? No, that's the one that smells a lot, right? It's very spiky as Apparently well. It tastes pretty good, but yeah, smells disgusting. It smells awful. I had a couple of them go rotten on me. Stinks. Uh, yeah. Flavor must be absolutely phenomenal to, to, for that payoff. I can't stand that fish tastes like it smells. Never mind a durian. That's Rez going down early, and they are locking it down nicely. That's a perfect MAC-10 fight to be taking. He gets himself two. Campus is once again working on his worm. He plays, but Borup's position nicely, ready to peck away at the inquisitive Hampus. Just Plopsky's USP, half health already. They're rotating to B because they've got control. And Plopsky really has zero options available to him. And a lovely CZ-75 awaiting him. I wonder where that MAC-10 went. What is that down there? That's there it is. the MAC-10. Okay, so Nico upgraded from the MAC-10 off the Corpse of Cadian into the AK. So all the goodies 
the heroic need they've got. And now for Plopsky, it's just about damage. If he can make them reinvest whatsoever or get a kill or two with the MAC-10, it'll be extra cash, but that's not to be the case. Down will take him down, and it's a clean one for Heroic because they're up three to zero. NIP now. We finally get to see them invest in the gun round. And to speak of their buy will be Nork, the man that we have been keeping our eyes on. He cooled in their G2 series on the third map. Let's hope that's not the case here today. Can't afford to not have Nork in the server. Need him. They it's do. time to make an impact on the CT first weapon round. I'm seeing a pause. Could be tech, not seeing the timeout uh, tally going down. Actually, what's the server conditions looking like? So MC just uh, whispered in my ear, um, so one of the heroic players spilled coffee on their keyboard. Okay, so this will take some time. Um, now, I'm sure you at home watching have spilled many a beverage in your keyboard before. Uh, now, oh wait, we're back already? Couldn't have been a lot of coffee, or he's got a very, very good peripheral sponsor. He's just got a new one out of the box and plugged it in that oh, quickly. I think it might be this the latter. I've seen some of the pro players' peripheral stash. I think smoothie has got about 100 unopened mouse mats now. That's what you need. Get as many mouse pads, mice, <laughs> and keyboards as you can. Headsets, you just need two of them. Two of them, yeah, that makes about, that makes about as much sense as it could. Now, a little bit of a lag on the Go TV. Don't stress, the players don't have it. Oh, wow, okay. Hampus bringing the aggression again. They got stack nades for it. That's twice we've lost an aggressive NIP member to the ramp spray, trying to punish on the deep smoke. And it seems that Heroic have done their homework. That's a great way to punish it. And oh, Rez vulnerable as well, just shy of the mark from Tessus. Into the site they go, Plofsky. He has a smoke, it'd be great to drop on that sandbags and late. Oh, Nico's found him and that's the wide open B site again. NIP are getting pulled around this map. Completely and totally. Look at Burrup, just no sound cues, holding the shift key. Might even get Nork here if he's not careful. Oh, he between shot between the, the two. two of them, straight between the wickets. Now Nork's under pressure. Twister's alleviated a little bit of that with a kill from behind, and they're already chasing. Look at this, heroic plan at B. They've already got two players going up a ramp. Yeah, they've got full control, my friend. Full control, White Ra, all owed to an old Starcraft name. Stown's going for a push here. Look at where Nork is. Yeah. There's no way he's ready for this. Nope. Hello. And that is a Galil for an AWP. Not the worst trade deal in history. We'll take that. And NIP is going to be very salty with how that one went down. And it was how all of the kills manifested. Think about Hampus getting blown up. Then you have Plopsky trying to rotate and getting caught in transition. And then Twist going down after time. Now, sure, the CT side, they don't have the same issues that the T's do with going down after time, but it's the fact that he thought he had that rifle. I'm sure that Hampus was already coming up with a way to use it in this round, round number five, yep. and it's been ripped cleanly out of his hands. Like, they were already ready to chase. You could see that, that Heroic knew quite clearly what the game plan was. They did not want to allow NIP to have any escape routes, and that's the frustration. And of course, you'd be frustrated. You've just waited, hiding in the ladder in that entire time, thinking you've gotten away with it, thinking you've hidden in plain sight, and not to be the case. There's more aggression over towards He's trying ramp. it again. They've got nades this time, and it does make Tessis' job a lot more difficult. Hampus wants to flank him. Was he going to walk straight down the ramp? He is. He's through. He is. He is. He's trying to rat it just on the edge of the gray screen. And he's been found. The spray is there from Borup. Rez pushing, spotted, and... Oh, he actually does well to find something with the 5.7 pistol. Nade destined for greatness on Nork. Bang. And that's the end of him. Tessus dunking him. Lingering in middle is down. He could find Plopsky's rotation, but he hasn't choose, chosen to push the issue. Instead, they gather all of their resources to a practically infallible four-man T advance. And then Plopsky and Twist are going to have to deal with the numbers. It shouldn't really work out in their favor in any stretch of the imagination. Unarmored, both of them. Practically set up for success here, Heroic. And they're not rushing it. They want to take every precaution they can. They'll be smoking the site now. That's one side covered. And that's the other. Plopsky trying to challenge out, doesn't quite manage to maintain the spray. And they've dealt with this eco very comfortably, as one would have hoped. I love that we're seeing an MP9 as like a half buy option now. <laughs> it's so absurd. It's such a good gun. Obviously, not too much to talk about in this round with it, but the fact that's a half buy is Counter Strike's getting very, very deadly in every single round. We don't get too many full ecos anymore. We're maybe looking at maybe two or three across an entire matchup. 
hard resets. They don't exist and work in the same way as they once did, but NIP is still having woes with the economy nonetheless. As soon as they put a round on the board, that will send Heroic back down to the $1,400 loss bonus. But that's not going to be any issues. As we go through a couple of these highlights here, you can just see how clean these rounds have been. And with that, economy starting to build. Almost at the 10K mark for a bunch of the players here on the Heroic Squadron. And they should be smiling. Things are going well here. Nice little smile on Stown's face. Amp is caught off in the smoke, trying to be a bit of a criminal. And their first timeout being used. Plopsky yet to frag. One apiece for Hampus, Nork, and Twist. And Rez on three. Uh, the only bonus is that Rez is still managing to do 111 ADR, even though they are 0 and 5 on the scoreboard. Everybody for Heroic is fragging. Six for Tessa and Stown, five for Borup and Nico, and two for Cadian. How long can they stay? with a clean sheet here, Heroic. Another timeout, so it's back-to-back -back tactical timeouts yeah. being called here. Threat thinks this one's an important moment to talk things through. It's a panic button. Hit it. Why not get the full 60 seconds to talk it through and to not let things spiral out of control? I mean, Heroic already getting off to such a great start. Five to zero. You really couldn't ask for more. And we do see an AWP on the back of Nork. Bring that out. CT side. Lots of options available to him to find an early bit of impact. See the intentions of most of the players. Looks like it will be Plopsky Solo B, as always. And off the break we go. Big timeout called by the Ninjas. This is a, an attempt to pull things back into contention. Uh, well, an early four-man Aileen. But there's nobody really home to receive us. They've thrown those nades up just to deal with any early aggression. Space has been taken. Damage being done. Tessus put on notice and trapped towards the left-hand side of Forkrum. We'll have to get out and Hampus. Just thinking about pushing with that. If wow, he had actually nice. gone through, maybe now to take some space. That's a deep smoke, I think, into the forklift room as well. But who cares? Down's found a killer in the meantime. Hampus has to push that. This is madness. Yeah, they're grouping up very fast. Oh, he's working on the flank. The bomb's to his left. Hey, he didn't check it. Tess has found. Now he's worked it out. Hello, access. Hampus, and again with his powerful pushes, has changed the plan for Heroic considerably. And he's going to use ladder to disappear. He'll actually let them retrieve it. Look at Stown. He's still looking towards middle. Oh, Nico, hello? Yeah, it's hard. You can see how little of the grate he's actually got visibility on. Ampus. Oh, oh yikes. It with the relocation on the hunt for the same man. Now he's even ready for Stown. Oh, nearly a great round. He's already done so much damage, but Heroic have managed to have not only time, but the bomb and numbers. 3v2 as they advance. KD recovering that. Seems like the letter to choose from is B. Two perks to the angle Rez is holding. And Util is dropped. So Mo Molly on quad, smoke on the generators. And a frag on oh. Rez. He needed them both, though. Kadian finds it. That reveals the bomb on stairs. North oh. hits the banger. Makes a 1v2, a 1v1, and very realistic. Switching over to the M4, Chad starts to beam a smile. And Cadian is low. He's got a smoke and a kit. Everything pointing towards Nork having a real shot at this. Walling the default box. No one's home. Implies the plant could be for stairs. Cadian playing the waiting game here, especially against that smoke diffuse. It's going to be very hard to pinpoint... That defusing it, he can get behind the box. Oh, it's such a bad plan. KD is trying to call the bluff, and it's a perfect defuse. A 1v2 from Nork. It puts the NIP boys on their very first round of Vertigo. Oh, dear. All right, well, Nork, the clutch man, the clutch master, it seems. Every single game that we cover of his, he's pulling off some madness, has come through yet again, and that shot onto down as he rotated through middle. You're about to see it. This is so quick, because he's in transition. He's not expecting to see anybody whatsoever. And then as simple as you like, smoke, defuse, win as Cadian didn't peek, couldn't risk it. And by doing so, Nork didn't actually get back the AWP. So a weapon that was instrumental in that rotation is now gone. They don't actually have an orb ninjas after winning the round. Famous, MP9, not all the nades they require, but can they make it work? That's their first. They need a second here to start building a bit of a bank and a that's not the start they're looking for. Burrup takes down Plopsky, and now Twist, you're all alone. Yeah, and look at his options. It's stand and deliver behind, from behind a box. He's already caught the flash. They're wrapping in. It's a good angle for the first. Doesn't manage to find the impact he needed. 
So now, as the molly does get dropped, as does the smoke, there is very few avenues back into the site. Nork's already there, though. So if Tessus doesn't hunt, but he has, there could have been damage. Down. Ooh. Survival is key. He confirms there is still one working on middle. Haven't planted yet. Yeah, they're taking their sweet-ass time. Tessus is the one responsible for it, and now going. Here comes the push. Nico finds the head of Hampus, and, well, Rez, he's not too much far further behind him. So that isn't the two consecutive that would have really breathed life into the NIP CT side. Plopsky's having a rough time towards B as well, Alex. You can see he's yet to find a kill. And he's been an opening death here in round number seven. Only had an MP9, so he was trying to be cheeky about that. But unfortunately, that put all the pressure on Twist on the side, and he only had the Famous to work with. So to be able to dissuade and hold back Heroic, who are looking like they're hitting some bangers of shots right now, it just wasn't the answer from NIP. Twist is looking for some. No aggressive towards middle. Nades exchanged on either side. Smoke to hold them at bay, but that's only going to be temporary. Eventually, that fades. They need to find some impact and... Uh-oh. Uh -huh. Hampus, you cheeky bastard! He just runs away! Throwing the deagle to support his teammates. He's found them a way in. Maybe the ninjas can do more. AK has not, but the, re the res deagle, a worthwhile drop. Now the Franks, however, do fill in favor. Brown on blue. Caden recovering the bomb and taking his time to recover and regroup towards middle. The ascend. Tessus continues to keep control of any ramp info they may desire. And it's Plopsky pushing down those B stairs. So he'll be able to tuck in the route to mid to B, however, completely and totally open. Plopsky's been having a real tough time as the solo B player. Get to frag. Kadian's actually opting not to scope here, so being very quiet about things. This is Plopsky's chance. Has a one-on-one -on -one duel. It's going to be close range, and he converts. Dreamy. So they know where Plopsky is, and... And probably safely assume that the plant can go down. So Cadian and Stown just looking to wrap this one up, and it's feeling all the more difficult as time continues to pass. That bomb ticks away, the utils drop, they've smoked off both of the avenues from there, they just have to stop the smoke push, and that's it. Bob's your uncle, Heroic, takes seven. And I will remind you that NIP, they won the knife. They chose to start on the CT side, and so far we've seen very little evidence that they can hang here with Heroic. Look at the stuff from Hampus. He's given it his best. He's been pushing and pressuring every single time. The line from Kadian, very hard for Plopsky to counter. Heroic have come with a very rigid and regimented Vertigo T side. Hampus's responsibility to try and make the call to fix things. They've got the double AWP. Maybe that's the answer. They're going for a fast B here. Nork's perfectly positioned to stop it. And a oh dry peak! Oh my god! Completely and totally bone dry like the Sahara, Nico, and Borup into B. Oh dear. Oh dearie me. AK out orping the AWP. And now round nine could very well spiral. They don't have to go on this. In fact, look at the rotate. <laughs> They've acknowledged it. The fakie boys are coming. Oh boy, they have made NIP bite down hard. Hampus, the last man, he gets taken out by Tessus. And as they continue forwards down once more, Rez so falls. Good. It's just one man in twist. And again, wrong place on his lonesome one on four. Nico, fighting, like you'd think on the flash maybe, at least you get a little advantage. You didn't feel he needed it. A bit slow from Nork. One of the quicker orpers we've seen in the server tonight, but not tonight, not, not in round eight. And look at the cash swelling for the heroic squad now. Uh, I forgot to call you Hank. That's all right. Chank. R.I.P. Hank. He is still alive. He but... is still alive. Gone, but not forgotten. Might, we might even spend Christmas with him. That'd be yeah. nice. I've started to fill up the Amazon cart with the Christmas tree and everything like that. Yeah. I do think I still haven't processed my grief. We'll have to... Oh, yeah, we'll get there. We'll process it when we stop working every day of our lives, and then we'll all just cry together. Maybe cry together in a circle. Have a little hands. cuddle. We d I invited JKS to come over for Christmas as well. I like that. We could have a little LAN, then have a cry. Or cry while we're landing. Cry while we LAN. One way or the other, life continues to surprise, and so do heroic seven. Make it eight now in a row. That's the third time out called in nine rounds of play. That is enough. It's like compared perfectly with Rez's perspective. Just to just to quickly look at the opening frags here, Alex. Um, Hampus is the only one who's found an opening so far for NIP, and that was on the the Deagle round where he got sneaky in between those two smokes. 
Yeah. Every other round, the opening kills have fallen in the favor of Heroic. Uh, so you've got Tessus, who's 3-0 and at the moment. We just saw Nico hit an absolute banger. Burrup's found two. Cadian's even found one. Stown's found one. So everybody from Heroic, when they're offered up a pick, they've been able to convert. Let's see how far they can push this, because NIP are operating on only a half by Deagle's MP9s, and that AK-47 is the best that they can boast. And Plofsky's taking a lot of space. Look at this, through his own smoke. But that is such a hard line to fight. Filthy angle here from Nico. Bloody through the lamp. Out of the majority of their crowd control utility here, NIP, it will just be two HEs remaining, and they'll need those in tandem to get themselves much damage because operating on full HP will be heroic. They flash forward. They have Cadian with the pointy end of that or picking up towards the short position. One of those nades has found the head of Bow up. Bomb up towards ramp, and that's the pick they were waiting for. Hampus takes a cursory glance. And here comes the push. Quick switch, nearly costing Tess the round. Fortunately, he's got teammates alongside for the ride, and we are dealt with. Nork backing away. He does well to find the one head, but Heroic have the numbers again, and they are not ever too scared about stopping and rotating. They have not only found the frags on A, now happy to group up on B, and it is a very passive hold from the remaining ninjas. Twist is just floating at CT, hoping he can rotate to A if that is the final mark. I wouldn't be surprised if they have all this intent towards B and then go all the way back to A here, Heroic. Yeah, 30 it's seconds. Do it quite a lot. Flashes, nades, here we go. Yeah, there it is. So they're selling a fake. <laughs> they are. Maybe Nork and his patience. borup has got to check his corners. Twist is frag. This is when it can get awkward. And 15 seconds, Cadian. Ah. Yeah. Nork knows exactly now. what's up. And AK-47 makes it a little easier. Uh-oh, fakes it. He's expecting the stick, and oh, no, no time now. Twist wins by surviving. He'll go back for the AWP, but it will be NIP second, and it's all thanks to the frag of Twist. Ah, that one there, a bit of a boo-boo. Nork swinging again. out to Borup again. Yeah, a boo-boo for sure. That was back in map number one where we saw some of those from Heroic. Remember, Cadian flubbing two jumps. One was to get onto the site box on Mirage. The other was to get to the van in the two-on-one, trying to jump across to the balcony. And he fluffed both of those, potentially fluffing that call. The overcomplication, they had the number advantage. They were just against the low pistols. And, well, that AK-47 of Twist, and by separating, they did, were unable to divide and conquer. It gave NIP their second, and now they want to see if they can grab more as Hampus postured forward, this time towards B. Nico not clearing his corners. He gets picked up and peppered from Plopsky as well. Fortifying the B defense is clearly the name of the game plan here for NIP in round 11. Yikes. Res might spam this. Yeah, he will. So giving up a couple of picks here. Adrian wanted more. He's going to fall as well. Not a very convincing looking round 11 from Heroic. Yeah, who's next? REZ in the server tonight. <laughs> next. Anyone else want to try? Okay, well, damage, that should be the name of the game. Heroic, pushing forward. Smokes are good. Flash is better. Stown looking to take a couple of scalps here. Two to deal with towards the boost box. Damage on to Nork. Yet to convert the frag. Has spotted one more heading back through their own smoke. Time now, 42 seconds. Burrup would need to find a magical kill here, but yeah. all five members of Nipper on site. They're everywhere they need to be. The flash is everything. I mean, if Burrup could somehow Catch one of them. Look how passive they've fallen off. Perfect. Now the re-aggress. Too many targets. It's Nork. Let's put the cherry on top. Three for NIP. Heroic. Still comfortable with their T boasting. And you can see that they've got plenty of cash to continue to invest. But the B lockdown. This was the opening kill. Again, shutting down Nico's uh, early project on B. Res having no issues. Just trying to catch Cadian on that second repeat. Okay, NIP. We're trying to keep it competitive. They've used three of their four timeouts already in the opening to eight rounds of play here on Virgo. Cadian wants the fight, and Nork's got him. Booked him, despite the flashbang. Just putting the trigger. Crosshair in the right place, and another disadvantage for Heroic to overcome. A late resurgence here from the Swedes. Really nice, and Tessus may have a bit of a gap to deal with here. I wonder if he's anticipated such an early ramp prep push.
a bit deep, that smoke. Yeah, I think this round's going to stall out quite heavily unless NIP want to take the fight to Heroic here. But look at Rez. He's actually taking the fight to them. The flank is on. He might have three in the bag right here. So much space, so much information. Spawn. And now, well, Plopsky's done half the hard work. He can just do the easy stuff. He's down again up against an impossible task. This is great from NIP. Just getting the early kill. One kill. Previously, when you took a look at opening kills, it was just Hampus, right? Yeah. Now, starting to get a bit more of a spread. I don't like your chances here, Stan. 40 seconds left. Money has been whittled down for Heroic at this stage of the game. He might even consider a save. He has 4,800 left. If he holds onto this AK-47, can drop an AWP for Kadian in the next, or an AK or two. Well, it won't be two. It'll be an AK and a Galil. Regardless, he looks like he wants to hold on to the AK. So NIP have been able to now post a few in a row, and they need it because we know that their T-half is good. We liked it the other day against G2. But if they didn't give themselves at least, I want to say, four or five to work with, we wouldn't have had too many opportunities to see that. I think now that they've come alive, the tail end of this first half is going to be much more back and forth. Yeah. Let's see how much NIP are able to recover this first half. Here's the opening from Nork. You can see they're blind, but had the crosshair in the right place and then just took a bit of a pot shot. And as soon as Rez had pushed through A and saw that nobody was in connector or in the forklift room, you can see NIP go on the offensive. And when you know where the other team is, if you have a very good idea, you're able to have some pinpoint flashes, some good crowd control utility with the mollies and HEs, and they bullied Heroic in that one right there. But this will be the last buy round attempt from Heroic here, unless they can plant. Nico dealing with any B pushes, three towards A, and that utility up the ramp harassing again. Rez has actually been molotoved in, so that's where they continue to spam. They found Hampus through the smoke. Rez is low as well. Just one more bullet. He's going to drop. Tessa's taking room. Bow up now up onto scaffolding. Katie and through the smoke. He goes wow. down. I cannot believe Rez got a kill. Yeah, he gets away with murder, and now Plopsky punishing Nico. Smoke play on B. He's been getting the better of Nico two rounds, if not three in a row. Short aggression twist wasn't held. He is not going to get away. Surely Tessa's can punish that. Oh, oh twist. What a double. Starting to really t hurt Heroic's chances on this T side. Borup's got a lovely one tap. He could deal with Twist, but no. Nice. A double kill at 3 HP from Twist for NIP. How do Rez and Twist both find impact there considering their HP? That is absolutely absurd. Those two are heroes. Absolute heroes. And that's bottomed out the money for Heroic here. Sure, the loss bonus has started to build, but if they wanted to go with anything threatening like AK 47s, that is not going to be the case for round 14. Twist here, just an absolute nuisance. Even converting now into Tessa's wild, wild scenes as now he's up to nine. And well, this was looking like it was going to be a very, very quick third map. That's changed. That's quickly become the opposite as five now for NIP, Tech Nines, and one P250 for Heroic to bounce back with. Nades to harass, Plopsky playing forward, and he's come alive now, actually starting to get a bit of impact in this one. Oh, nice little fake flash there from Kadian with the use of the decoy. No utility thrown out on the back of that. Hamp is more than happy just to stand and receive. Utility being lined up, and we've seen this from Heroic before. They do a fast pounce onto middle. Like to steamroll through either for the mid to A or a mid to B split. Molotov onto construction and Hampus. Look at oh, that. Oh, doesn't get better than that. This is a flawless finish. NIP. That's, I think, five? No, yeah, five rounds in a row. Consecutive fashion. NIP's really making this half their own now. And I will, of course, remind you that Heroic's hard work of the opening nine rounds of play certainly don't go awash. They're not redundant. Getting nice and close to the... Win of the half, though, NIP have managed to really get some damage control rounds in. It makes their T chances significantly more competitive. We are seeing the final call, then, of our final map in this series. And our first half, and wow, it's Plopsky's B aggression. This time, Nico wins his duel. He's been losing that relatively consistently. Hamper's trying to play up against that smoke again. again. Yeah, believe it or not, he wants info. There's a bit of a one-way gap he likes to use there on that one. Oh, ooh, the head. It's going to be in Twist's favor if he catches this. Loved it. Been a couple of those lately. Hampus did die aggressing towards the ramp, and maybe that's why they've called this off. Right now, if Heroic regroup... Uh-oh, Twist is on the hunt. Yeah, he's going to deny that there's nothing middle. This is really, really smart play. Actually makes that disadvantage less 
impactful if they can put their pieces of the puzzle on the right side of the map. Schweiss, this is great info. Clears mid. If he gets down that ladder as well, he could be one of those late arrivals on the flank. Oh boy, look at the timing on this as well. They haven't even pushed that far away. This <gasps> is huge. He can hear the steps to confirm it as well. You can see that knife for any sort of additional speed. Now he wants to punish. Finds at least one and disappears. Hoping that will slow them down. Res has a nade to try and stop the plant, but they're not low enough. Nika will be brought down to size, though. And he does get naded. There was two. Not through one out oh, as well. Twist. twist finding it all on the flank. Heroic ripped out of the server for the final round of play. They could not have closed this gap any better. He gets two from the scaff push. Nork losing his life. Tessus trying to make a round out of this. Time now. 20 seconds, you're right. The flash enables him to isolate the dual res, does not miss. 8 7. Heroic and NIP practically inseparable. What a resurgence. We got a game here, folks. Stick around. I'm so sorry that I wasn't really there for me. No, no. Cause nobody else is showing any empathy. Eight seven, NIP and Heroic, and they are nipping at the heels of Heroic are the ninjas. It seemed like it was all sunshine and rainbows. They were gallivanting through the meadow. It looked like it was nothing but a, a short pursuit of that pot of gold at the end of Vertigo, but they haven't managed to get there. Instead, it was NIP who responded with, I think it was six at the end of that, six in, in quick succession after sitting 8-1 down. So a monumental comeback to put Heroic back within a competitive second half.
Machine, I'm joined by Sponge. We're into our pistol round. Uh, GG.bet favors heroic into this one. It is a split series so far. Very much an intense game. And I'm spotted. Yeah, Cadian's butt cheeks will be the death of him. Kopsky makes a bit of a meal of that, though. Costs him a great deal of his health for the remaining 90 seconds of play. He's got the Molly lineup. N not as confusing and convoluted as the one from the stairs. And this will land over towards that construction area. They start their walk up. A molly on the pistol, it's important, does indicate intent. Tess has managed to get a jiggle on that info, and now even an elevated position, which would be the off angle. Oh, Nork gets the duel, well handled. Finally knocks him off, Tessus. Oh, now Borup filling the feed. Very nice shots from him, and Plopsky steadies his aim, and Borup finally shut up. It's a 1v2 for Rez. If he can just isolate these duels, but he's not going to be able to, they're pushing together as a unit. Nico swings in to confirm it. Heroic with two pistol wins, the first two pistol wins. <laughs> Of the series, and it happens here in the third. Well, they've been loving winning the second round, so let's see if they can do it again after the pistol. Through. Might need that to get off to a good start here with their CT side, and Borup kind of just had a bit of a shooting gallery. Picking off heads, making it look easy. That's a good impact there, as you did see they didn't want to allow Rez to have an opportunity to play out that one-on-two situation. They just ran at him, they took the fight at him, made sure he couldn't breathe. Make him operate under pressure there, and well, NIP are just down to the pistols. It's going to be four Glocks and a P250 for Plopsky. Katie and up towards the crane, peering on down towards the smoke. He'll be set up with that of Tessa. They both have MP9s, they both have a bucket load of utility, and they're both under pressure now. Katie and Spam's on out, res down low, and there you go. Tessa's is trying to mop it up. Plopsky will kill him, but he needs to get out of control. katie has been peppered, but only a very, very small margin. And Hampus, final man surviving, just with the Glock. Nico wants him, and he'll get him. That's going to be round number 10 now for Heroic as they continue to get closer and closer to that magical 16 and picking up the series. That would put them straight through into the playoffs. Is the first team locked in? From Group B, yeah, yeah. they will be. Let's see if they're able to continue this because... We saw a really good start from them the other day on against North on their CT half of overpass. They managed 11, and then they cooled off, and then they've cooled off here today to allow an 8-7 half against NIP. Aggressive smoke down the ramp, and just while we have the time, because I know we definitely do, NIP, when we saw them playing against G2 the other day, never really forced the issue up a ramp. They were always more than happy to wait out behind this smoke, allow the CTs to invest a lot of utility and time in trying to control that area of the map. And oh, Hampus got the spot there on his jiggle. Damage in the meantime done to Tassus over towards A. Heroic would need to do this in waves. They would need to continue this smoke, continue it naded, and they're not opting for that approach. They've now given up scaff control. Yeah, so this is basically Heroic deciding they'll let them walk up ramp. Borup's off angle. Oh, his head is visible and Hampus is too damn smart. Found it. It was a very shallow line. He's found it all the same, and so Swedes have a man advantage now for the rest of this 60-second round. Heroic has to fight here, Alex. They don't have much information. Oh, look at all the pressure they're about to be under. Yeah, what's Tess has got? He's going to try and molly scaff, but it's a bit too late. Nico going to have to find something here. The flash was there, but it's all twist. Wild spray. Kadian eventually finding one, but he needs... Well to not have gone hunting down by Plopsky. He's down, the only one left. He was just going to have to think about where it all went wrong. They didn't have the weapons to really contest against the full AKX. You're right, Chad. The way you framed it, it had to be those waves of smoke, flash, strafe, peak, make it awkward for the NIP, but they got to do everything they wanted. I'm surprised we don't see more teams do that, especially considering how much room Heroic had there. If you throw that initial smoke and they don't have a dribble smoke so they can get scaff control and use the one way, then if you just keep it smoked and keep harassing, you don't need to spam, you don't need to be in the open. You just need to keep that area of the map smoked off until they actually show some intent. And uh, I think that might be one solution to the way that NIP have started to approach their T-halves here. To be fair, it was all on Hampus getting that pick for Borup. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been able to operate in such fashion. Heroic had to play forward. They had to play in the face. And you could see with the timing that they chose to take that fight, here's the initial kill. Oh, damn, that is a small angle he's working with. And, and as you come up here, you can see the nades and the Molotovs. They were all intended for if NIP were further back on the ramp, if they were still a little bit deeper. 
and the timing, the call, it was just off as now we have a smile on Threat's face. It's been an intense half for them. I mean, to be staring down the barrel of 8-1 and then to be able to jump forward 30 minutes and to be sitting there with just a two-round deficit, it's definitely looking oh. better. Cadian completely caught out. Hampus just ducked under his scope and punishes. It's clear. Uh, another opening frag. And yeah, you're right. He's just sweeping in. He's saying, B's clear, boys. Come and get it. Dinner's ready. Rotate's going to have to be fast. Heroic are on their way. Hampus so deep already. I almost want to say save. You're right, and that should be the call here. You're not going to do this. Plopski's already locked them down. He knows exactly where they are. They're in limbo between the two sites. The problem is, look what they're saving. A Famous, a Deagle, and an MP9. It's down with the carried across M4 is the best weapon they have to boast here. So it's not the best of saves. Sure, it's better than nothing, which is what they would be operating in the following, but ooh, it doesn't feel great right now for Heroic. They will need to make sure they can get stuck in in the next rounds. Otherwise, NIP are looking to level things up with 10-10 and with quite a lot of ease. I don't know if we get it in the replay, but just to, to see what Kadian was working with there because it felt like it was just too oops, too easy for, uh, for Hampus. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, like he just crouched around, like he, he... It felt like it was going to be respected, he, right? Uh, the Cadian wasn't flashed. No, but I think what happened was because the, the initial, like, piece, when they spotted each other yeah. initially, he nobody... Had, they'd respect. Exactly. The, otherwise, he just run straight into... If Cadian had repeat, Cadian yeah. would have had the advantage. But you could see Cadian was trying to get out of dodge, so... So it was flashed. I have to tell a lie. So the flash vision restored at that point, but it was just too late. Rez actually yeah. gave the assist on the flashbang. So definitely get me a knife and fork. I need to eat my words. Okay. Cross Cadian is life, the AWP and the round. So Ooh. big stuff from NIP. Here we go. Cadian's invested a lot here as well. Heroic have to make this one at least expensive because NIP are building a bank. Got a blue man be lean here. And it could translate into kills. It could translate into rifles. It is Hampus having a little look. And they're going to swing on his contact. This is big. Gets a free frag. Wasn't ready for more. Even had his knife out. Nico doubles up, grabs the AK. That's mission accomplished. He said, make it costly. Well, Twist throwing nades and flashes from T-Spawn indicates that there is one of the three accounted for. They don't know where Nork and Plopsky currently reside. Kadian has the info short. And as the mollies start arriving on sandbags, that only reaffirms their thoughts. Nork going to set himself up, likely going to get on that ledge for the elevated position and start procedurally clearing into that A site. Tess is holding close angles. Tess is, isn't alone, though. And Kadian, oh no, Bloody losing smoke. his life, yeah. Smoke blooms. They've got so much time. They don't have to rush. This Nork will set himself up to start picking into the site. They have got the double smoke down. Is Plopsky going to try and plant? The molly will deter them. They can plant safe. Oh, or can they? Down spray is the only other option. You can see, look at that. That's all part of the plan from Heroic. Molly default, spray the cross to not, and now Tess is taking space. He might be able to catch a deagle shot here onto North. Did he see Nox's head? He did. Oh, oh my God! What a shot, Tessus! Makes that look easy. A great reaction. He wasn't even there. Wasn't even ready. And now Heroic, for the first time in some time, put a CT round on the board. That's breaking the two in consecutive T rounds we've seen from NIP. Keeps that two round lead. Wow, uh, Tessus's adjustment right there was huge because I'm pretty sure that when he was in that position, either he hadn't thought that anybody would be standing there and his teammates called it out, oh. or it got communicated to him at last second because he definitely saw the head through between those sandbags at the tippity top there. And that's a massive shot. That is a big shot because that was Nork. Yeah, Imagine that was a, Nork in a clutch position. That was after plan. Orp on sandbags. If, if Nork doesn't go down there. The Nork special. Yeah, exactly. And it could very well have read 10 at the top there for the ninjas in pajamas. But the pajama ninjas aggress. Hampus refuses to quit on this B pressure. It was down far enough the Orp shot. They bring in a double Orp into Vertigo here. And Nork's got one of his own. Just patrolling the very precipice of that smoke. He doesn't catch any info on Tessus's cross. Fine margins they're working with here. Yeah, and that's a... Big investment of Tessus's M M4. He needs to be supported. He needs some help. Will they try and one That's way to this? And oh. Nico drawing the attention with his spray is even better. That works out so well. The Danes practically seizing an advantage and it's extended using that gap. Nork knows where Tessus is. He's going to get hunted here. Misses his shot. Now the smoke is enough. Nades as well. They can get him out, bail him out. Mission accomplished. Heroic leave. The man advantage. It's a four versus three for our final 60 second push here in round 21, third map. These two teams have been finding handfuls of rounds and taking it in turns. Hampus, this pace. Yeah, he's got a good chance here. Oh, 
Pass this good timing. He's going to get the double over. He's opened up the site, drops the smoke. He's practically made this round a realistic goal. They've even got the numbers advantage now. Bomb goes down. Nort can play after plant. Just like that, the in-game leader from NIP has made a round so winnable. They've even got all this util. They didn't need to use any of it thanks to Hampus. Again, just a risk taken by Hampus there. There's no rhyme or reason to that other than the fact he's felt that there's a gap. He's felt that they won't be watching in a 2-2 scenario and he's, you know, gambled correctly, which is insane. What a play. It's absolutely insane that he's picked that timing because Teslas was watching the angle. Sure, it was a left eye peak, but just as he's crept on up through the crane position, Teslas has looked to help KD in with a nade, set him up for some aggression, try and get some information, and NIP have punished. They have stolen one away. Nico had a freebie through the smoke. Tessus was able to lock out one as well. And then they've survived with all three players. That is wild scenes because Heroic, they, they're not really in a position to be losing rounds like this. Yeah, this death. I mean, Cadian's just going to be so, so mad. He doesn't get to do anything about it. He can't even be mad at Tessus, really. Just caught out by the timing. The second, the angle he was staring at. He turns away and there is Hampus. Perfect exploitation of a gap. It Spidey sense tingle from the in-game leader. Closing the gap a little more then. It's three for three in our second half. It's down trying to continue to contain ramp, but a boost isn't a bad suggestion. They've changed it up the setup here, Heroic. They've actually opted for an AWP solo B so they can try and maneuver that Deagle into a powerful position. Tessus on sandbags. If he goes unchecked with the boost as well, Certainly not a bad pairing, but they are being passive with it. It's just Plopsky at the moment, but they're starting to send more resources to A. I think that the key thing about this setup here, and if we get to see it come to fruition, it might be masterful. As soon as this molly drops, they'll stand up. And with the tension drawn... Oh, Plopsky's actually taken down Tessus in the how? smoke. Yeah, I don't know how. <gasps> Wild spray. Nico is going to stand his ground. He doesn't want to make the sound cue. He knows there's someone right beneath him, and it could pay off. This is all about timing. Short is a threat, and they both know it. That's the frag they were waiting for. Now they can dismount. And they've kept it into a 4v4. Bomb on the back of Hampus. Twist lining up something for the site. 40 seconds. Borup's going to respond with a smoke of his own. Thirty-five seconds. The pressure from NIP. It's wall bangs. It's nades, but it's not frags. Yet. Twenty-nine. That's the duel. Hampus goes one for one into the site. Nico finds his second, and Nico finds his third. He's just locking it down. Sticks around on the site. Bomb's been retrieved. He can deny it, and he will. Give him the ace. It's only res. His teammates could find it. The double orbs not having to stop and play for the retake thanks to the hard work of his their teammate. Nico does all the heavy lifting there. And we're covering it as well. So they'll keep the AK and the double orp into the next. You can see what it's done to the ninjas in pajamas. It will not be everything, but they found some successes on those early B peaks. I wonder if they've got a spawn or a, a motivation to try it again. They were sending a solo orp. Cadian was solo orp that round on B. Lovely handling from Nico. He stuck around on that boost for so long. There must have been a degree of self-doubt. I, I really do love the idea of that setup. Sure, it's risky if they just walk up scaf unannounced, but if they... Let's let's talk about that a little bit more. If the player towards Sandbags lives and they have to try and nade him out with multiple players... They're all looking... Exactly, yeah. right? So if this works again in the future for Heroi, you could see multiple frags coming out from that position. But this is a very important round here. Smoke will fade. Tessus. He really can't afford to go down to a Mac 10 And he has. Topsky even getting away with murder for a moment. Nico punishes. He's having a game. 21 kills, Nico. Creeping out, they're boosting. He saw the head. He's been spotted out, but really want to jiggle that. You're mad. Stown's going to drop a smoke to deny the elevator. Flash as well. But the frags do favor the ninjas in pajamas squad. It's just a question of putting your resources in the right place. Threat on the mic. A's the right play here. That's where they're going. Look how spread out Heroic are right now. One towards B, one passive towards CT spawn, trying to watch middle and just Cadian, the only oh, man over okay. towards A. How are you retaking with two orbs? He's calling for the help. You can hear the steps. It's loud. It's a likely pre-fire. He tucks in. Stown's missed his shot. Not going to make the same mistake again. He's got a molly for the default. Cadian's orbs hit as well. Again, NIP held at bay thanks to that incendiary. There is a push, though. Twist is trying to take space. 
They have an A to deny. Borup's already taken down Twist. Looking good as the nade lands perfectly square on the jaw of Rez. Borup doubles up, and that's Heroic taking 13. A well-held A side. Those orbs both finding connections, and I have to give credit to the incendiary. If Rez gets the bomb down, if they can play the after plan as they desire, it's different. It was down that threw it out. Catching Nork, partnered with Borup, who got to get on that headshot box. Perfect stuff. Heroic. A necessary round converted. Yeah, that's a very important one there. And I didn't note the lack of smokes for NIP going laid in towards that A bomb site, operating with very, very little. Some flashes were good, but it didn't get them close enough. And the door has been closed. The last tactical timeout has been called. And they need a miracle right now because Uriah Hampus has found them a couple of big picks over towards that B side to open the door on three, or at least two, sorry, of their three rounds to talk this one through because we said that Nork went missing the other day on the third map, but NIP walked away with a clean one on G2 against G2 on train. Today it hasn't been clean and Nork has dropped off nine frags for him. He's found impact all throughout the rest of the series. It's just a shame not to see that across all three as it is just these pistols now and most likely 14 as we do see one of these more tactical ecos. They might just take their time drain the utility of Heroic here, make them have to reinvest. It's two P250s and a Deagle. Now this Deagle and Nork, I just said he's been missing in map number three. If he hits a banger opening and they're able to cascade onto the B bomb site, he'll be the hero. All right, Mantle's up and over, sees that nobody's home, throws some deeper utility to dissuade. Another nade off the backboard. And they're just left down here. A very heavy lean at this stage towards middle and B, but we can see with the radar that that will not be the end goal. If they get the bomb down, you know. It's a success. It is. And Hiroko have practically given them a realistic way to do it, but you can see, access. yeah, they're so mobile. Kadian's actually filling the gap now already, just in the perfect time. They're gonna go for a run boost. I wonder if oh, I love it. yeah, he's in the angle to <laughs> try. They rocket man him across. But it isn't going to stop the plant, I don't think. Good nade, though. Tessus has been waiting on A this whole time. He's got another one of those. It's a little... Oh, they're so trigger-happy on the nades. It might still enable the plant. Now the incendiary... Oh, a double. He might not get it oh, down. Baby burn. Yep. Couple of seconds. Double flame is enough. And so that's 14 for Heroic. And we will see now the, the ninjas in pajamas are cornered animal. They tend to bite the hardest. No way out. Only way into the site. Maybe. Green was 16-6, so Heroic now with a much closer test. What were you saying, Chad? I was saying I, I want to see if that B focus is where NIP want to take this because if they head over there and they find another opening, it looks like Heroic have already plugged the gap. They've decided to do a heavier lean towards that side of the map for these last couple of rounds. And once again, they've done that. So it's two towards middle, two towards B, and just one towards A. Oh, this is very, very quick. Early harassment right now. NIP have taken ramp control fast. Normally they've been doing this a bit more limped in. They respect the utility in this one. They've gotten up there and they've actually put pressure on. That's forced out a lot of nades here from Tessus now, just operating with a Molotov and it looks like he's playing retake again. Mid control is being pushed for. You can see here on Cadian that they have posture on up into at least the garbage room. Twist's line is just for info. I don't think he's expecting a headshot from that. Notice how many nades are being left over from Heroic. This is going to be a cluster on the A bomb site. Oh, they're setting up for a retake of ramp. Nade to harass. Just a little bit of damage done. Or holding a nade. He's holding his smoke. I want to throw that out soon. Nico's taking space. You know you have them trapped right now. Hmm. Spots hampers going ladder room. Borup does drop his smoke, wants to exploit it, and it works. Catching the head of Twist. The spray, though, is there to trade. Plopsky's done well. Rez is on the site. The bomb's loose. 35 seconds, and they still have incendiaries to deny. We've seen how effective they've been. And there is a smoke on Nork. His smoke could be the one to enable that bomb plant. 25 seconds. Ampus and Nico duking it out, and the flank has been found. Plopsky trying to get the bomb down. He's burning, but he does get away. Nork extinguishes. A three-on-three three then, and a crucial one. NIP to get back into this game, they need to survive. Rez takes a fight with low HP. It's a double orb retake, perhaps not the one for Heroic. They re-smoke though, and Nico catching another. They know Plopsky's lingering on the smoke. 
Locking out Norcorp for Sandbags. Plopsky needs to find him. Stown does get a nice tag, but it's into a 1v1. A smoke drop beat being pushed. He wasn't ready for Nork. And NIP, thanks to a 1v1, find the necessary round to keep this series close. NIP continue to find that really, really nice timing. The sweet spot, as it were, as they make their way up scaffolding through short and then up ramp. In no man's land is where these heroic players are getting caught. You can see Barb does great to use the one way, but he's taken down. And the frag that we didn't see was Tessas, who was in short, just caught out of position. So once that rotation had come back through after the retake, they were too slow to take back territory, to use their utility. It felt like they were in two minds right there, heroic. And because of that, you're seeing them having to go into the next gun round here with an emission it's just going to be an mp9 from borup they have one orb this time three m4s utility is good but they've had to go back to more of the default hold now three players postured over towards a adn gonna have to drop his own smoke to survive that he needs help fast can't leave your orb like that trying to bail him out on the incendiaries Doing good work. Kadian actually did take a chunk of damage. I think it was from a nade and oh, Rez, what an entry frag. Just peeks into him. Left eye wide, Zantara's peek into Tessus, he's gone. Kadian responsible for short. Oh, and the wallbangs are getting him. Rez, that's two entry frags into the site at a crucial juncture of the game. I mean, a Nico double, not on the cards tonight. Plopsky makes sure of that. Oh dear, Stan has to go huge. One's good. Two more better. better, yeah, but they're rotating back to B. No messing around on A. They know where Stown is. They know that Burrup's most likely in tow with those frags, and they're quickly making their way over towards the opposite side of the map. Footsteps would have been heard. Hmm. Stown's been them. spotted. He's being them there, though. Maybe he can find one of those two. No, they both get across. They both slip his net, and it's still Rez fragging. Easy in the name, and it's easy in the game. 12 for NIP. Yikes, it's going to be a save from Heroic here. NIP are well and truly back in this one. Has to be the eco. It's only the 2400 loss bonus in the next round. Heroic are going to be operating with very little the next time we see them get the guns out. And it has been the same problem for them time and time again. Just the no man's land of short to A. Players getting caught out of position. Players looking the wrong way. Play players losing fights. Players getting wall banged. That has been the problem area. It's very clear to see where the issues are. Last two in a row for NIP. They look like they might be able to get the third. It will just be USPs, and they've actually stacked over towards B. This might be problems for Hampus now. He's on his own. Molly's good. It's very good. Look at them. They're both forced to push on a flash, and yes, it works, but Hampus still holds down mouse one and catches them both. And this is clean. So, yeah, the gap, as you highlighted, Chad, will just be closed up. At least it's not too much to get scared about. And a nice $600 frag for Plopsky to finish things off. These two teams, inseparable, man. They, they, they succeed in bursts. But we get to see a full 30-round game here. I'm curious as to if it's a half-buy from Heroic right now or if it's the all-in, and they're taking a timeout probably to do, discuss those exact options. And the reason I say that is you can see right now they're all operating with just over 4K. If they invest at this juncture of the game and they lose the next round, going into the final round of play, or potentially their final round of play, they'll have to invest with 2,900 only. Now, if they buy right now, we're going to be looking at M4s or Famuses, and then depending on which one of those rifles they choose to buy, limited utility. If they go with the M4, we probably don't see many diffuse kits, and we probably don't see many incendiaries. But if they go with a Famus, it means they're weaker in terms of the firepower, but they'll have more nades. So they have gone for the partial, and by having that round 14 on the board, they have the liberty to go for this. NIP still need one more to tie things up, and there's no reason that Heroic can't steal away a full Deagle round. We've seen it many times, and the fact that they've paired it with five HE grenades and five smokes. There is room for NIP to throw this one away. Steps on A. Nades on A. Full health for the ninjas. Hampus. It's got twist in tow. It's nice. A good crossfire, and it does give them the one for one they hoped for. Borup would have to hit the hero Deeg on the repeat, but try and deny that rifle as best he can. Twist, quick thinking from him. Oh, he's going to try and get it in the skylight, but that'll do. Kind of tricky business if he goes for that difficulty level right now. Not sure if I'd be looking for something that hard on round number 28. They need to find success with these nades, and oh, that's just not enough damage, is it? Only eight points of damage done to Nork with that one. Back towards A, where they've been finding that success. NIP are looking good.
Nico could be very vulnerable to Nork here. A millimetre further. There's a chance for Nork. The steps continuing to make it clear. And all oh, that trajectory. He knows exactly where Cadian is. Great shot. That was all he needed. And Tessus again. No HP, but no problem. Deagle headshot. A 3v3. 40 seconds. I need another Tessus. He can't do it. Nico. Trying to use that smoke, but Twister's jiggled it nicely. Can't hit the shots. It's another NIP round in the gamble. The conservative buy has got it close. Maybe Borup can continue to close that gap. He has confirmed they're not necessarily out of this one yet. With a frag on his deagle, a fresh mag found. He's even got a smoke, no kit. Rez. Oh, reveals his location with the pre-fire and wow, great spray. He's even picked up another smoke. Oh, he's lost track of Nork. There's a kit there though. Yeah, he spotted it. So drops the smoke, picks up the kit, and looks to hold it. Nork and Nork. Fired off the shot. He has an AK net nearby. Needs to spray now. Oh. It. And he ninjas it right under his nose. Borob, that's a big clutch. And it's such a crucial moment. They went came in with Deagles. Borup, a late flank. And crucial frags, putting them on match point. The end of a series, it gets chaotic. He recovered, he got two smokes and a kit on the on the hunt for that 1v1. And all three kills, absolutely huge impact from Burr up there. Yo. How has he pulled that one off? That is what's been working for NIP smokes throughout the game. Elevator. I mean, okay, so look at this from Nork. It started great. It really did. Tessus with 20 HP wins nice that shot. duel. Needed to. But then Borup comes in with this. Twist, probably not too dissatisfied. But then when he starts seeing what Borup does with it, Rez's quick pre-fire actually gave him enough info to piece together a 1v3. Yeah, Rez messed up there. If we're going to look at the individual who uh, maybe shouldn't have peaked when he did, it has to be Rez. The first Whoa. kill Borup gets identifies his position. And then that's left Nork. What could he do? The smoke, the spam. You hit the shot till you don't, and in this case, he hasn't. And now, Heroic, just one more round to lock themselves into the playoffs. NIP need a battle back with two consecutive just to get to overtime. And that might be the one that's broken their mentality. NIP, the AKs are up. The double orbs for Heroic. Hampus going for a B pick again. Flashed off the line, will be Stout. Space has been taken. Light bit of damage done, and it looks like they're going to boost up early here. I like it. Are they ready for this? Um, yes. Yes is the answer to that. Stown is staring right at it. They had a perfect read. Borup will catch that nade and it's going to chunk him down to 61. Molly will follow. Spurs him further back. They could do a boost here at Quad. They've even got wall bangs for him. They really want to knock Borup off his perch. And Nico's taken info. He's pushed all the way through middle. That must be an A stack now. I can see Cadian knife out charging to rotate. He gets there in time. These have been won from NIP before, though. This same approach. Yeah, it's all the timing on short. I really do think, unless we get an NIP opener within the next 20 seconds, Nico's locked the door behind them. Here we go. Some util deployed. Kadian responds in kind. He's got an own smoke to make it awkward. They're doing retake. They got two incendiaries and two nades. For the plant, Stown peeks over. A little boost, no less. A bomb going down very early. They can't stop him. Twist gets away. Maybe a 3v5 can shape up. But as I talked about earlier, Nork has got this flank on lock. It's about timing now. Attention drawn away. He can start to push up. Plopsky caught by Kadian. Oh, dear. Two flags flank. away. Heroic to take the series. Send ninjas to the lower. And Nico's got it. He's got one and a second. 26 frags on Vertigo. Nico, the star of the heroic show. And they've stolen it from NIP. 29 rounds is where it ends. The defuse comes in. And heroic. 16. NIP. 30. The series is done. Heroic weather the storm of the pajama ninjas. And are off to the playoffs. The first from Group B.